Uh, good morning, physics students. I know you're working on your pendulum labs or, or should be working on your pendulum labs right now. Um, I've received a couple of questions and I've seen a couple of the, of the submissions. And I want to make sure you understand what's going on here. Um, what this says to me is you haven't read the material and you've just been either copying something from the internet or, or just ignoring it and, and putting random answers on a page from the previous section. All right, here's what a pendulum is. It's something hanging on uh, a string and it's gonna be moving back and forth. Now, the, the time period isn't the time period of how long it will swing. The time period is, is how long it takes to go through one whole cycle. Um, that's what it said in your text. I don't understand why this would be um, something that, that, that I needed to discuss uh, because it's right there in black and white and um, uh, you've been figuring time period and for some reason some time periods have been coming out really crazy um, <clears throat> even if I pull this way back here um, the time period is going to be pretty much uh, a second or two um, if maybe two seconds I mean, you really, I mean, it would really have to be moving slow to go through one whole cycle in two seconds. Um, so if, if, you've, if you've already submit this and you've made a little mistake, pull it back, resubmit it, or resubmit it later. Um, if I make a comment on your, on your submission, go ahead and refigure this. Uh, I, uh, I'm posting this so I can help you out. The other question was... Um, uh, how do I figure out what gravity is using the information on my table? And uh, again, I gave you the formula. It's, uh, I, I don't understand why we can't uh, use the information that we've already been given uh, and, and do this on our own. I mean, you, you're seniors now or juniors or, or what have you, or your honor students. You should be able to figure this out, especially since I already did some of this for you in earlier uh, assignments. Uh, what is the time period? Well, the time period is equal to what? Uh, 2 pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum divided by gravity, and then you solve for gravity. And so uh, apparently I have to do this all over again, which is a, a little frustrating in and of itself. So time period divided by 2 pi equals the square root of L over G. And then I'm going to square both sides. So time period squared over 2 pi squared equals L over G. Okay, well then I guess I'm going to uh, divide by L. So, I'm going to move it way up here, I guess. Uh, time period squared uh, over 2 pi squared L equals the inverse of G. So, if that's the inverse of G, then g is going to be equal to uh, 2 pi squared times the length divided by the time period squared. Um, I, I've already done this. I listed that for you. I don't understand why there was a big problem with this. Um, you're going to have to start doing some, some of this stuff on your own, uh, especially since I've already gone through it. I'm more than happy to help you out. Send me questions, but I, I found it a little interesting that that the questions were not so. They're, they're from information I've already been given. That's already been given. So there it is again. I um, hope this helps you out a little bit. Uh, uh, it, what you should be figuring out when you're when you're filling out these tables is that, you know, just like I did before, mass doesn't affect the time period. Amplitude doesn't affect the time period. The only thing that affects 
the the time it takes for one whole cycle to go through one back and forth and that's one time period the only thing that affects that is the length of the pendulum so there's your information good luck finish up and again i'm not accepting late work anymore um, after three days it's gone thanks for your time